This week's offering is about the subject of cloning. Um, of course, I take it in other directions in my reply. Um, at any rate, uh, this came through an audio uh, message, so here's the message. I was just wondering, given that the creation of the physical body is the last event in the sequence of events of creating matter. So the spirit descends into the astral, fashions an astral body for itself, and the conjoined mental astral bodies descend further into the material and they fashion a physical body for themselves. What happens when we initiate the reverse process, we create a material body that is bereft of astral and mental bodies. Because obviously we've done it with frogs and sheep and God knows what else. What occupies that material glove when the glove is created first? So, <clears throat> there are a couple of main points that I want to make here. First off, is there is no physical anything that is bereft of an astral and mental component, okay? Everything physical, in order for it to be physical, for anything to be physical, it must have an astral body to connect its mental spirit to its physical being. That is how mental spirits integrate into physical form. And there is no physical form without that connection, without that mental impulse, without that spirit, that little spark of the eye is always present in every physical form. So, <clears throat> the implication of that is that if you clone a physical form, it has already a mental and astral aspect. It has in itself that spark of life, that spark of the eye. Okay? And the only way that that spark of the eye integrates into physical matter is through a temporal mental body and an astral body. So when we... I mean, humans have this idea that we are uh, so creative. You know, we can create things that are unnatural. Uh, we can clone things. We can violate the laws of nature and make things that shouldn't exist. That's just simply not true. Which brings us to my second point of who is the creator? And I have encountered this at a very deep level in my work with the golems, the crystal golems, and making and creating the crystal golems. So, <clears throat> everything in our universe is composed of the eye. It is made up of eye stuff. <clears throat> everything, everything in our physical, temporal universe contains within it that spark of eyeness. Okay? This comfy chair is made up of eyeness. It is eyeness. 
And this physical body, this wrong I-ness, is made up of I. And it's I, sitting here in this comfy chair made of I, experiencing the, the chair, experiencing what it is like to sit in this comfy chair made of I-ness through i -ron. It's all I. So when I, Ron, creates something, it's really I creating something. And I, Ron, am just the channel through which that creation takes place. And it's not really creation in the sense of, you know, something brand new pops into existence. It's really just reorganizing what's already in existence into a new form, okay? It's nothing new. It's just rearranged old stuff. All of our human creations are. <clears throat> Just the I, you know, enacting this little drama of the moment of I within I experiencing I-ness in the temporal present moment. <clears throat> so it's always the I that creates. <clears throat> Even though I run go through this process of construction, of making the crystal golem's physical body, uh, there is already an astral body for this thing, already a temporal mental body for this thing that I'm creating. <clears throat> that already exists. And I am just putting together the physical form. <clears throat> and so, when does that astral and mental creation occur is more the question. And who is creating? Am I creating that mental and astral body as I create the physical form? Well, the problem with that idea is that at the root of this temporal mental body and astral body and physical body is that spark of the eye. And that's an eternal thing. That doesn't just happen now. It simply is. It's, from our perspective, always there. That little individualized spark is always part of the plan, so to speak. You know, it's just always there. So, really, I'm sort of receiving that creative impulse so that th this spark of the eye must come into physical manifestation in this moment of time-space because that's how all things come into physical manifestation through necessity. They just must be now. Otherwise, they aren't now. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. We've got to understand that, you know, we're just a little bit of the little spark of the eye here in this great infinite ocean of other sparks of the eye, all interacting, all interacting. That's all that it is. 
And of course to us as human beings in this temporal, physical, present moment, we experience everything as uh, solitary selves. We are, uh, you know, here, <clears throat> here, right here, within the confines of this body is where I, Ron, am right now. And that's separate from chair. That's separate from pants. That's separate from everything. And I'm experiencing all these other things. But at another level, all where it's all connected. There is no barrier between I Ron and pants and chair and everything else. It's all I. Okay? That seems really irrelevant in our day-to-day -day experience because we are separate. There is separation between me, Ron, and chair. <clears throat> and that is the level at which we function. Uh, but it's not the broader level. And when we think in terms of that broader connection, it really changes how we experience the whole universe. You know, it, it changes the quality of our interactions with the other particles of I-ness that surround us. It makes, it lubricates that interaction in effect, you know. It opens us to the true significance and depth of that interaction, that continuous interaction of parts of the I experiencing itself. So in that case, if we create a clone or a crystal golem, we are participating in the universal laws of nature. We are creating a physical structure that houses the astromental body, okay? Inevitably, and it's simultaneous. It's not bringing it down one step at a time. It's all occurring at the same moment, okay? <clears throat> that progression of mental to astral to physical is more relevant in terms of enacting our will, okay? So we put a mental impulse that takes astral form and eventually becomes effective on the physical level, okay? That is sequential. But life itself is not strictly sequential in that way. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, the clone, the crystal golem, has a life of its own that we are not really responsible for being there. We're not creating a mental and astral body to go into this physical form. That's one thing I learned, again, making the crystal golems. When I... Uh, reach up to make contact with that little f flicker of flame, the solitary self of this I, that is the golem, it's already there. What I am doing in this magical process, this Kabbalistic process I have of giving birth to the golem, is I'm bringing it fully into the physical form, okay? 
I'm bringing the wholeness of that essential meaning into its solitary mental body. And the wholeness of the solitary mental body into its astral body. And the wholeness of the astral mental body into the physical shell. So it's fully in its physical form, which it isn't until I perform that magical ritual. Okay? That's what the whole magical ritual is about. But if I had just made the physical shell and not done any of that, the astral and mental body would still be there. It probably would not, at least at first, have been there fully. It would not be the, the crystal golem that it is now. The same applies to the clone. Now, and many other creations, So we fashion this physical thing, and the crystal golems, it's, I'm fashioning uh, a specific energy uh, dynamic of these crystals in this particular juxtaposition. Um, now, if I don't do that right, uh, the astral mental body may not be able to fully engage at the physical level. With the clone, if everything's not just right in its genetic makeup, then it may not be, its mental and astral bodies may not be able to fully integrate with the physical body and there will be a defect of some kind. That happens all the time in human childbirth. There's all kinds of physical defects, and that's what it is. Certain defects in the physical structure that make it impossible for the astromental body to fully express itself through the physical body. Okay? So a lot of clones, cloning experiments have gone wrong because of that very thing. The, men, the physical body did not fit the astromental body well enough for the proper functioning of the astromental body in the physical form. Okay. That happens naturally. And that is just the experience that that little spark of the eye needed to have. You know, it needed to experience what it's like to be in a body that doesn't work. You know, it's an experience we all have at some point throughout our, you know, stream of lifetimes. <laughs> It's a natural experience. <clears throat> and, you know, I've had failures in the things I've created. And, you know, I realize now, from what I've learned from making the golems, that it had to do with what I constructed was not right for the astromental being that was going to inhabit the physical structure. And we do this all the time. We're always creating things at the physical, astral, and mental levels. I it's life is just so common. Life comes and goes. Well, it doesn't come and go, but it comes and goes through different forms. It's always changing forms. 
always changing forms. Forms are always changing. But the I, that little spark of I, is the constant throughout all those changes. So, <clears throat> I hope I've wandered around that uh, topic enough to uh, actually make some sense for you. <laughs> Till next time, bye-bye.